and, and he'll talk to us about Camino and the DTI pipeline for traumatic brain injury. So, welcome, Gary. That's good. Hello. Uh, thanks, Mike, for uh, inviting us to, uh, to this really important workshop. So, um, so let me forward. So actually, there's a slight change in the title, just to focus. I'm going to talk about both Camino and DTITK, and uh, hopefully I will show you that we are building up a, uh, a prototyping, a advanced diffusion MRI pipeline that has, potentially has application in TBI. So just a few words about our group. Um, so the focus of our group is on the uh, microstructure imaging. So the idea is very simple. So from a clinical point of view, so these sort of images are traditionally being used as the gold standard for diagnostics uh, in neurology or any other disease. So in this case, we can look at the, uh, the different cell sizes and different myelinations and change in myelination and changes in different si uh, population in size will reflect a particular pathology, a particular disease. And uh, our focus is trying to be able to develop a set of tools where uh, we can use to measure that information non-invasively without kind of doing biopsy, for example. And this is an example showing that we can look at the caliber, axon caliber, or axon diameters uh, in the uh, in brain. So I'll show a more detailed example next. So the, the general framework we're doing is to, to try to extract this information that we, we can get from histology, for example, cell size, shape, density, et cetera, is trying to measure that using, relate that to diffusion MRI measurements that we typically acquire. And so we're trying to be able to so you go from the signal measurements we measured here to predict the different tissue parameter we're really interested in. And so how can we do that? How can we try to predict this relationship? And the approach we adopt is using a, a modeling approach called, we call a tissue modeling approach, where we create analytical model that capture the salient features of tissue as we see here and relates that to the diffusion MR signal. We call that approach a virtual histology. And uh, so in the rest of this talk, I'm going to walk through the, the pipeline that uh, the Camino and DTITK will allow you to do to be able to get that kind of information. And the, uh, so we're going to try to be able to acquire the right data, apply the right analysis to extract the, uh, the feature we're interested, and then do the normalization to, so that we can do group analysis, and then the appropriate statistical tools so that we can facilitate the clinical diagnosis where we're really interested. And uh, so let me start with the imaging part, which, which basically the part where Camino is really the space occupies. Um, so it's really, a, a, a we intended Camino as a platform for advanced diffusion MRI analysis. Um, there, there are quite a few other features that it supports, but uh, which is kind of over the 10 years of Camino development, but in this particular talk, I will focus on these three sets of more emerging technology that I think potential of interest to this audience. So what, what Camino will provide you with are a set of analytical models for diffusion MRI, as I explained to you earlier. So these are the basis for us to extract the information we're most interested. For example, the size of a cell, the, uh, the density of a cell. And also, we provide a set of very robust framework for us to be able to extract those information from the data we acquired. So that's kind of a model fitting on type of analysis. I'm not going to get into much of the detail, just to say that we provide that as part of Camino. And, and also a very important aspect of Camino is to actually having a, a framework for validation. So how do we know the model we propose actually makes sense? Not only we use a database approach, data-driven approach by fitting to the measurement we have, we can also build a simulator, which is including Camino, so we can actually test in a very controlled fashion what are the features of, uh, the, of the model can be captured with our system. So, okay, let's see if, uh, here we go. Uh, so let me start with the diffusion simulator, just to give you a sense of how things actually work. So the way diffusion MRI to be sensitive to tissue microstructure is because uh, the diffusion of water molecules, as most of you know, are sensitive to geometric boundaries in your tissue that constrain the water molecules. And uh, hopefully the video will show. Okay. 
So then what our diffusion simulator allows us to do is to specify a particular configuration of the geometry that reflects, for example, the tissue structure. In this case, showing you a structure perhaps you would see in the, middle, in the mid-sagittal cross-section of the corpus callosum. But we can build, as I show later on, similar geom different geometries where we can describe different type of pathology potentially. And the model, uh, the simulator will allow us to simulate the pattern of water molecules. What, what I'm showing here is the, the displacement of individual molecules, water molecules in that space, and how they kind of change in time. And that can be the simulator given a particular choice of uh, MR sequence, and it will predict a particular diffusion signal as you would measure. And so the simulator takes you from specifying the substrate of the geometry to all the way to the measurement, which allow us to test uh, the kind of uh, the signal that our model can predict from analytical modeling. So, um, so just to highlight a few different kinds of models we can create, for example, from a more realistic uh, distribution of so-called uh, different variety of axon size, or also for crossing fibers, as well as potentially modeling permeability, for example, in diseases where you have uh, distal myelination, uh, as well as even more complex uh, substrates where we can use really complex mesh-based geometry. So which, uh, the variety of these substrates allow us to test the kind of model that we can support with our measurements. So, so as I said, uh, so one of the key features of Camino is to provide you a sample implementation of analytical model of diffusion MR, which you can use to fit your data. Um, so this is a sampling of currently support uh, canonical individual elements of the model that we can, we can utilize. For example, from um, the left column, the, the type of model we can use to model axons, and to the, the model we can model things like the ex, extra, uh, extracellular, extra axonal space, the, the hinder diffusion, what we know, as well as things that are more complex, for example, modeling on um, things are trapped through certain biological process. process. And uh, so we can actually and take these set of elementary models and combine them to any kind of multi-model compartment model that you would like to model your tissue type. Here's an example showing you the combination of one of the extracellular space with one of the uh, uh, intracellular or the axonal space combined with another more complex space. So these sort of combination, and we can produce as many as you want and trying to test which of these models that's most appropriate for your uh, population, for your study. So in the next two slides, I'm going to show you some examples where we can potentially uh, use with these type of approaches. And this is the first example where early on, on Daniel Alexander the, and the, the head of the microstructure imaging group demonstrate for the first time to be able to map the axon diameter and density in the living human brain. And on the top, we're showing you uh, uh, the, the kind of a validation where the approach to apply it to a post-mortem monkey brain, where you have, using a post-clinical scanner, pre-clinical scanner, you can actually have much better uh, specification for these type of measurements. And we can get a really good measurements of the axon diameter and recover the well-known low, high, low in terms of diameter distribution. So you have the high diameter in the middle and low diameter in the, in the, in the genuine splenium. And you can see we can get quite similar, similar pattern even in the in, in vivo human scanner. And this is a, a Philips scanner with one of the more uh, higher end uh, gradient system, which is important for this application. And so one, one limitation of this approach is it's still a bit time consuming and relies on specialized hardware. So we're very excited recently to develop this new technology, which is called Naughty, uh, which allows us to measure uh, the new right orientation dispersion as well as the density. And uh, so one of the uh, features which we, we, we think this method will be really useful is to be able to uh, disentangle the various factors that you see typically contributing to the FA measurement into contributing factors that are probably much more interpretable uh, and can at least do more specific analysis. And in this example, what we're showing here is in this region where characteristic dropping FA 
And as we well know, it comes from crossing fibers. And using Naughty technique, we can actually tease apart the crossing components, or we call it dispersion, or of the orientation of different axons, and from the, uh, the neuroid density, the packing density of the, of the axons. And furthermore, what this technique allows us to do is to look at also the features of the gray matter where we can looking at where uh, you can typically just get a low FA, where now we can see the pattern of dispersion of the dendritic structure for people who know the gray matter structure itself, as well as looking at the density of those dendrites. And so one of the very attractive features we hope these technology allow you to do is uh, the acquisition protocol is very simple to implement and it's clinically feasible. We're talking about a 10 to 15 minutes acquisition and uh, using two, uh, two DTI shells, for example, a B value of 700 combined with a B value of 2000, where you can, we can access these type of information. Um, so in relation to this particular workshop, and uh, w uh, this is a very exciting uh, research carried by a group in, this, uh, uh, in the US, which it just published, I think, a few weeks ago, and to demonstrate that, uh, they actually look at animal model of TBI and looking at whether neuroid density, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if it provides you a more sensitive way of, of follow the brain recovery in, uh, in, this, in this animal model. And the two things they demonstrate, one, is the neuroid density measurements provided by MRI, as similar to the approach I just described, correlates extremely well with the measurement you would have to get is histopathology. And uh, in the paper I'm not showing here, this correlation is much more stronger compared to if you use FA, which demonstrates that these are much more specific and sensitive parameters uh, for, uh, for this uh, population. And even more interestingly, what they're demonstrating is the neuroid density is a much more sensitive measure to, uh, to follow the recovery of the brain injury in this uh, animal model compared to use FA. And uh, so what I'm hopeful that using Naughty, as I described earlier, will allow you to extend these type of animal model studies, uh, which is not feasible in clinic, and then with Naughty, we can actually do that in the living human subjects. Uh, I'm actually working with a group in Stanford already piloting of this approach on the TBI population. So, so the second um, part of these talks to explain so how DTITK now allows you to do looking at the group analysis, support the normalization, as well as looking at uh, the specific statistical tools. So, um, so what DTRTK allows to do is to actually align different diffusion data using the information that's unique in the diffusion rather than in the, uh, in the T1, as these slides demonstrate quite clearly. And this is a traditional T1 image, and this is to the right is a, is a DTI image. And for example, when you look at the white matter, uh, in this area where we're pretty much largely homogeneous in T1. And of course, we know fairly well there's a multiple uh, tracks are traversing different directions and uh, in adjacent to each other. And that information simply is not available to uh, your uh, T1 data. But with the DTI data or diffusion in general, you can really tease apart different tracks. So to be able to actually align these tracks correctly across population, it is, it, it is crucial to be able to have access to that information and rely on that information to drive the registration. And that's precisely what DTI-DK allow you to do. Um, so it was recently, that, uh, without getting to the technical detail, uh, what we are uh, quite happy to report, it was recently reported to be one of the best performing tools of its kind, and it's more, uh, for example, compared to the uh, very popular TBSS tool, um, for one. And uh, so we recently published a paper to demonstrate that DTI-TK will allow you to support an unbiased longitudinal uh, analysis of diffusion, as these uh, earlier talks demonstrate the importance of this application. And uh, so I'm just going to give you uh, an example of what we find in that paper. What we demonstrate here is that, uh, so what we did is we have in this population of controls and ADs, uh, each patient actually, or each subject gets uh, scanned uh, twice, how we have two time points, and then within each time point, they get scanned twice, so there are two repeats. So what we're here is basically use that two repeats within a single session to do a test retest uh, analysis. So you would expect a, a proper analysis in this case shouldn't find any differences between the test you know, within the two scan within the same session. 
And what we're reporting here is, unfortunately, using alternative technique, where we here we compare to FA-based registration as implemented in, in the FSL, you can see a uh, disconcerting amount of uh, uh, kind of bias in their measurements. In contrast, uh, with DTITK, we, don't rep we cannot find any statistically significant changes between these uh, two scans. So as, as a demonstration of using tensor-based alignment improves the specificity. And the second experiment we demonstrate is to looking at since we have two uh, measurements at per time points, now we can actually are looking at uh, basically four different ways of looking at temporal differences. We can use the first measurements of the first time points, compare with the first or the second time point, uh, measurement of the second time points, or the vice versa. So we get about four different ways of measuring the longitudinal changes. And you would expect an appropriate method will actually reproduce the same differences uh, with uh, different measurements. And uh, so as you see on the left side is where we use DTITK, and clearly we see a very consistent trend of changes. And uh, with FA-based approach, without getting much detail, so you can clearly see there's a loss of variability, which is not very satisfying. Uh, just want to mention this particular analysis using a region of interest approach, using the, uh, the ATLAS approach that Susumu mentioned earlier. So just to demonstrate this is an indication of the sensitivities also improved with the DTITK. So just to finish off, uh, just to demonstrate uh, the ability to do a very uh, analysis approach statistically relevant specific to white matter. And so we develop approach uh, known as the track specific analysis, similar to what uh, Guido mentioned earlier. And one, one interesting approach compared to the standard of voxel-wise approaches, now we can actually uh, test specific hypotheses about a specific track. For example, in the ASL, ALS, we know that affects, say, motor tracks. And we can actually tease out the differences specifically for that track. And compared to the traditional approach, we can also represent the finding very naturally in the framework that natural to that anatomy. And furthermore, we can actually isolate the effect for that track rather than gets confounded by its neighboring structures. OK, just to summarize, uh, I hope I demonstrate that Camino provides a very rigorous platform for developing and validating advanced diffusion MRI methods. And, and we can actually use also the platform to apply these methods to routine clinical research and practices. And DTITK supports population-based analysis of diffusion data. Uh, it implements a state-of-the-art spatial normalization tool and it delivers the statistical inference tool tailored specifically for the white matter. And we hope that together they deliver an end-to-end -end pipeline for advanced diffusion MRI analysis, which is potentially relevant for uh, TBI. And to finish, just to, uh, uh, to thank my colleagues at uh, Center for Medical Image Computing and the Microstructure Imaging Group at the UCL, in particular, Professor Dan Alexander, who, is a, who, has lead, who has led the development of Camino and also the Pan Image Computing Science Laboratory, where I did my PhD and also developed the DTITK there. And Camino's being supported by uh, various funding agencies, and DTITK has gotten some support from the NIH. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.